Well, there's no point going through all the uh, struggling and moving around without actually showing you where I am because as travellers in days of old, escaping the harshness of the weather, it's one of the vagaries of nomadic life. And I come to avoid strong winds by coming into this dell, but I know it's not a dell. We are really in the lion's mouth. That's the uh, this is the caldera, and that's the co last remnants of the cone, and this is the caldera of Mount Mangri. So, uh, if it shakes and I start seeming looks like I'm running, it's probably because it's shaking and, and I'm running. Uh, I've got to negotiate some. Tricky terrain here. It looks like nice, relatively smooth and solid grass is actually deep and rubble strewn and quite treacherous. So, Sabbath greetings to you. We're in the beginning. I need. Helmet of salvation. Uh, belt of truth. Helmet of sal salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. Feet shod with the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Shield. Extinguish all the fiery darts of the enemy and the sword that is the word of God and being constantly in prayer. Sabbath greetings. I was moved by the Holy Spirit to come here last week preaching down at the shore and just as I was leaving I looked across the, the bay Manukau Harbour, Mangri Mountain here in the distance and the sunlight struck the mountain just at that point I was looking over and I felt moved to come. So here I am. And uh, when I've preached here before, I've preached down on the outer hillside, beautiful green fields that rise up gently to the to a gap in the, co in the uh, cone, the rim of the, the deep cone. Uh, so it's a bit easier to climb there and as I said as you may be able to hear the wind is coming off the sea constantly whooshing and blowing so I couldn't record there and then I, of course the only place to find shelter from the wind it seems is inside the volcano itself. Caves and places of refuge are often places of refuge for other things. And it's not without need that we go through here. I mean, have there been any tremors in the last few days? Is there any, any smoke billowing out from this caldera? No. But it is what it once was. It's a volcano. I pray that today's sermon is a word of insight and wisdom given for the people listening, the people paying attention. When preaching the word, I'm so grateful for the Lord's inspiration, guidance, apparence, that through the week there may be things that, 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 that somehow gel together into a time of preaching and teaching and reaching. I know as the Lord works in me, then no word from Him comes back void. So though I, I talk sometimes to ducks or rocks or grass or the air, I know I'm not alone in that. And I, and I give thanks, Lord that there are things that will listen, there are things that will partake 
and do take partake in your creation and your being and I pray that they're blessed by this preaching this reaching, this teaching as I am blessed and have been blessed by it and I pray for anybody listening or watching that they too might be blessed by it that what once is a, appears to be a, a trickle coming over the temple steps becomes a stream that is ankle deep uh, and knee deep and waist deep then a river that no man can cross that, that river will cause the lands around it to become fruitful the trees and then that river will meet an ocean and that ocean will be sweetened you might say well you've been a bit optimistic there Michael you're on your own in a volcano with a camera how can you make any difference well Jesus did and I'm not him not my difference between me being at the bottom of this volcano and, and, and the rim being the top of it not my by that and that again a thousand fold we're all called to give testimony to the work of Jesus Christ in our lives to the truth of Jesus Christ in our lives and that's what I pray I'm doing today in his name Amen. Wow, what a privilege. Pray with a hat on, forgive me Lord. There is a passage in the Bible about, about praying with our heads uncovered. And of course, famously with, more famous, perhaps well known, with women with their heads should have their heads covered. And I've argued in previous sermons that given that we're also called to pray without ceasing, we just mentioned Ephesians 6 being armoured for the work that God has for us as his people prepared like people in Nehemiah's day who, who were building the walls from the rubble rebuilding Jerusalem after its sacking after the gates had been destroyed and the buildings torn down that as they were building because they were under threat from the kings who were mocking them around them they would build weapons in one hand and trowels in the other or whatever they used should women have their heads covered throughout their waking day this sermon is not about uh, semantics or heuristics or doctrinal squabbling genealogies what a day what a beautiful day what a what a beautiful place what's here now tranquil an oasis of calm in a tumultuous if sunny day historically of course this cone would have been throwing these boulders up ashes and lava pouring forth and out maybe exploding out through those gaps that are in the rim times of utter devastation hard to believe that ground shaking and life poisoned and destroyed by the sulfur and the fumes and the ash heat gases pouring out I was blessed to travel to the uh, islands off the coast of Africa owned by Spain Lanzarote, Tenerife. And 
whilst in Lanzarote, the hotel we were at was right at the edge of a town, a development, maybe half a mile, a kilometre outside of the main development of town, and the places leading up to it were marked out, and the paving stones laid, and the tarmac laid for the roads, but they were still empty lots, or part-built lots. I think there's something in uh, Spanish law where you, you part-build a building, and it secures the planning permission for that site, so you then can leave it until the time is ready. So it was a bit like that, almost like a ghost town. And then you got to this grand hotel with its five-star atriums, uh, all-you-can-eat breakfast. Beyond it was the Lanzarote countryside, rubble-strewn, desert-like, Occasional low scrubby brush, none of this greenery. And I felt moved to go across it. This is before I profess Christ as my Lord and Saviour. I went out into the desert and I found and I came to a, a smaller cone than this. Still a volcano and still straight walls on the inside and circular, maybe I don't know, a tenth the size of this, quite, quite small, really, really a vent rather than a main volcano. But it was desolate and inside was that same calm, but we could see that, I could see that. That greenery wasn't there. Some druids or spiritual mystics have painted symbols around that cone. That was a day of my days of my spiritual travelling. I knew something was there. Most people do, that's what we see in this day and age. I believe in something. Because the heavens declare the righteousness of our King. The firmament shows his handiwork. An atheist is uh, somebody who ignores the obvious focuses on the minutiae to very narrow lines I can say that God doesn't exist that we're just kind of a random happening or happen chance but when I because when I, I see it when I appreciate it when I, when I when I give myself over to it I, there's no contest this beauty uh, and rightness the magnificence and majesty of stars in motion even if you know about cellular regeneration and growth and you know the, the birth of trees from from a seed the randomness disappears we get a sense of peace and, and, and glory and, and wonder for the universe that is and allows us to be in it consider those things. We might give ourselves over to the quest for explanation, for discovery. I did. And we might discover that underneath the seen world and the, the world that is expressed in our day-to-day -day living that there's a alternate realities and whether you try and express that in terms of science or spirituality it's very real and it's palpable and again the more you open up to it the more you realise that that's the truth in the 12th century stories about romanticized stories about the based around the legendary King Arthur
sides of the round table would often get into adventures when they let slip the horse's reins. So instead of being focused on a destination, they allowed their horses to wander and follow. There's actually biblical precedence for this. Of course, when the uh, Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant, was it the Philistines or the Amorites? Or the Amalekites? And they captured the Ark of the Covenant. And they took it to their home city and they were stricken with plagues, tumours, boils, pustules. So they passed it from that city to the next city. They said, here, you look after this. The same again, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, in the same story, their God, they, they stored it in the temple in their city. And their statue of their God, Dagon, was in that temple. When they came into the mor in the morning, the statue had fallen over. So they put it back up and then they went away. And the next morning they came in, the statue had fallen over, as if in supplication to the ark. And the head of the statue had been removed and come away. And then they were stricken with plagues. So they moved it. You have it. And that city, the same thing happened. The next city, the same thing happened. time it came to the fifth city they said look let's be done with this so they took two mother cows cows that wouldn't naturally leave their calves these are cows with milk and they tied them to a, to a, a cart and they put the ark in the cart and as soon as they did that, the cows began to walk towards Israel. They loaded it with treasures, golden tubers, tumors, models of the boils and pustules that each city had had. They were like, oh, we better not mess with the things of this God. So they let the animals decide which way they would go and show what the truth is of their predicament. It's not superstitious, but more appealing to the fortuitous, appealing to that, that nature, that, that undercurrent, that, that different life to make a decision. It's not the uh, subject that was given to preach on today. But by coincidence, this actually came up early in the week. I think I must have mentioned it last last uh, sermon too, about the Urim and the Thummim. I used to call them the Umim and the Thummim until I was corrected last week. Urim and the Thummim. And these were two implements of which there's no record of what they look like. All it is known is that they fitted in the ephod, in the, in the, in the, breast, in the breastplate sorry, of the uh, high priest. The only uh, in, Ju in, in Jerusalem, the only person who was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies, the place where God dwelt, where the Ark was kept, and it was thought that they were a divination tool. The decisions could be mastered, and asked, and sought. Now these things are never sought lightly, and. All divination tools were told in the Bible to lay aside in the New Testament, the new thinking that we shouldn't do that. But these things are real. Your horoscopes, your astrology, your um, tarot, your seances, Ouija boards. these things are real and they're apparent throughout, throughout the Bible. The spiritual wars of the spirit realm. The three kings, of course, the wise men, 
of Babylonian mystics who were able to discern from astrology, from the position of the planets and the stars that a king was coming, that a king was going to be born in Israel. More unusual than any other king. And then that star lit up and guided them, guided the way. Cosmic events. You think, well, what? Maybe I want that kind of power. I want that kind of help in my life. God's very clear. Only through Jesus, only through the power of the Holy Spirit will his realm be established, will his people live. Don't mess with the things, the, the Kabbalah, the, even things like Shrak Chakra, Reiki healing. This world and this universe is more splendid than our physical senses are able to perceive. And if we choose it, we can accept the Lord of hosts through the power of Jesus, through his sacrifice, into our lives and begin a walk that is empowered through his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit dwelling within us vessel, broken vessel, made good, the uh, uh, Chinese or Japanese art of, of when they break a bowl, they, they, they repair it with gold, make it something more beautiful than it was before. This is what God has offered to each and every one of us, each and every human. If you are breathing, you have the opportunity to accept Jesus into your life. change you haven't so 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 accept him call upon him seek him because when he arrives when his holy spirit is your guide and your keeper your comfort your friend your counselor In fact, through all our lives remaining on this world, we are called to be vigilant, to preach, to, to reach, to share, meet other believers and come together to encourage and extol each other, to build a church that, that Jesus is going to come down to. Wow. You're part of that. I'm part of that. If we choose it. It's real. And you know, I don't know what, what kind of evidence can I give. You know, I can stand here and tell you I was lost, I was a sinner. I gave myself over to every wind of doctrine. I was a bully, a mentalist, I drank, I used my intellect and my skills to encourage others. Party, 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 drugs, never class A's, not knowing me. The whole nine yards and a mix and a washing machine, never happy looking after relationships, or chasing after this, chasing after that. And it only changed when I asked Jesus into my life. And then it only changed when I was baptized, when I received him into my life. You see, the book of John says that, that when we call upon the name of Jesus, yes, he comes in and he'll sit with us and sup with us, he puts us on that road, but we're still ourselves taking that thing and we're going to run with it. It's like I picked up the ball if you ever played rugby. I've taken over authority of that. Look at me, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. Not realizing I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. We never have that authority. He's the king. He's the maker of heaven and earth, the creator. If it becomes about us, then we have people who can boast, people who say, I'm better than you. And don't ever, ever, ever let anyone in a church say that or make you feel like that. And if you do, tell them, rebuke them, say, I've not come here to be looked down upon. 
I've come here to, for help. I've come here to receive the things of the kingdom. And if you're not prepared to give it to me, woe betide you. And I'll go and find, I'll ask the Holy Spirit, and I'll go and find it somewhere else. Our God is worthy of all praise, all honour and all glory. And it's not about people. It's all about Him. And His goodness and His splendour and His brilliance. He has devised a way that He's going to achieve all of this through people. Isn't that amazing? By giving them a cross and a book and a pack and then they can go out and do the things of God and he will be their God and he will go with them. What a time for the world between the second coming and the first. We have an end point where things are going to change. during that time our, our calling is to be examples is to love one another not to pour ourselves out into a little group of people who, who just take and take and take no, no 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 that's not what the gospel says it says go to the village and if you receive sit with them and stay with them eat with them, share with them, spend some time with them then move on. But if you're not well received, clean your boots and go. In another passage it says about us being watchmen, like watchmen on the walls. And if we see a danger coming, we know that Christ is coming. And we can also see sometimes people living destructive lives. And if you, the Bible says that if you're moved to speak, then speak. Speak it clearly. The path you are on is destructive. I'm saying this not to condemn you, but to, because I love you and I don't want you to go down that path. I beg you to change. I beg you to consider changing. Because the path you are on leads to destruction. And then leave them to it. The Bible says, as the watchman, if, if we are compelled to speak and we don't speak, then their sin is upon us. But if we speak and they choose to ignore it, then it's on them they can go about their lives and make their own decisions. And we can turn to watching again and helping others. But if we speak and it is heard, that there is a, is a ministry. That there is a bringing into the kingdom. That there is a partaking of the Lord's table. Christ came to save us and through him we can reach out to others. We don't do the saving, it's his power, it's his glory, it's his forgiveness. But what a beautiful work relationship to be sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. sing. Heavenly Father, just guide me in this. Thank you. <clears throat> we stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord. God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, 
The earth is filled with his glory. The earth is filled with his glory. The earth is filled with his glory. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we sing Everyone sing Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory Holy is the Lord God Almighty The earth is filled with His glory the earth is filled with his glory, together we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with his glory, holy is the Lord. God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around it's the anthem of the lord's renown and together we sing everyone sing holy is the lord god almighty the earth filled with his glory holy is the Lord God Almighty the earth is filled with his glory the earth is filled with his glory well thank you Jesus Opportunity to sing and praise you. Today's message. I don't have a passage. There's been there's, there are many throughout the Bible. And uh, the title know by now because it'll have been on the video when you clicked it ultimate stealth mode I kind of trouble with it sometimes because you I'm not here to be an entertainer many preachers and pastors are and it's kind of tempting you think that it's going to be successful because it can be a bit nerve-wracking standing up and speaking out it's easy here, there's no one here apart from a camera. But it's easier. I know when I do it in the streets and in the cities. You feel quite anxious beforehand. Oh, you're speaking the work of the Word of God. responsibility with that in the Bible it says you know those who stand up take on that extra responsibility as preachers and elders and leaders do you 
feel any different to your normal daily walk? Yeah, well, yeah. Your concern is it's going to be false. You're going to be contested, mocked, stoned, spat at. When Jesus was on the cross, he said even the thieves, thieves, well the thief that was next to him, one saved and one not, even they reviled him, reviled. There wasn't a person left in the world. and his favourite disciple in the crowd at his feet so overcome and overwrought by grief they're upset consuming they run forward if they contest the guards were they killed? no they stayed wrapped knowing that this was something more but in actuality they maintain their part in that distance just as the disciples in the previous evening when Christ had gone up the hill to pray and said wait for me when he came back down they were already asleep not even an hour they could stay awake and wait for him and that was the beginning of the pouring out of God's wrath upon his shoulders that, that night of prayer where Jesus was so anxious and so stressed he sweat blood tears of blood an actual medical condition extreme distress maybe the next time I'm feeling anxious or afraid that I, I mean to hold that image and that thought in my mind we'll never be tested the way he was tested we'll never carry a burden like the burden he carried in fact he says my burden is light my yoke uh, my burden is not heavy my yoke is light how beautiful, how caring as a father for the sons, for, for his children to, to, to make sure that the greater part of the load has been carried by him, the work, it is finished, it is done. Yes, we have a daily walk in this world and our battle is not against flesh and blood but with the powers and potentates of this dark realm. There may be anguish, there may be suffering, there may be pain, there may be shame, there may be sickness, there may be doubt, there may be anxiety. There may be fear. All of them, all of them can be conquered in the certain and beauteous joy that is our Saviour Jesus Christ. And I'm, uh, I'm listening to that message too. We have to. Not just because it's. Uh, must don't be anxious well it is because it's it's said in love it's revealed in love it's revealed in truth don't be anxious and afraid isn't a stern instruction to, for you to snap out of the silliness of the position you're in it's more of a, of a, a beautiful word of calm assurance that we can that we can reach up deliverance from you might be missing a partner an ex-partner or a family member or somebody who's passed or somebody who lives far away or somebody on the other side of an argument or somebody all these things and in truth this life's passing fleeting as a vapor like 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 dry grass burnt up or blown away in the wind. The thing that we're working for and working towards is, is the eternity. Is the vistas that lie beyond the rim of this volcano that go into the oceans and the hills and the valleys and in a time and a place God's presence is the light in it. 
those things have got so far high and above than this world, better than we can imagine. And we don't need to be anxious and afraid because our Father is with us. My experience, my testimony, my advice is reach and expect that here too. We can call Jesus into our lives and be given peace and we can bring people around us not to be removed from the world but to be effective in it to be kingdom dwellers in a place of barren wretched despotic sometimes cruel prevailing thoughts for a day that we can become that river. Once the sea is sweetened, we can see that the person that we meet there, the person that we see over there, the person that we don't know on the other side of the planet are following. his guidance and guise and yes I'm sure many people who, who are not in the fall will be rising up in their prot protestation all these terrible things happened and this thing has suffered this happened to me and that can't be right and this oh come again come again into the arms of the father and know him more fully and receive of him the good things and know the truth of a sweetened sea an opportunity to steward the world and prepare the bride for his coming for the bridegroom you want joy you want celebration you want to get the plastic out of the ocean you want to end up suffering and sickness and disease and poverty it's within our ken but we need to have a unified way of going about it and Jesus is the only way we can do that one world authority and one world religion outside of a surrender to Jesus is not a surrender to Jesus at all it's an invitation for chaos God won't stand for that silent but if we become hard-hearted like the people of Nineveh like the people of Babylon like the people of Israel he will pour down fire upon us I can't, I can't soften the blow of the prophetic word of the Bible if we don't choose him if we continue to be wicked if we continue to follow and do the things we're not asked to be perfect. We are asked to, to come into fellowship and a sharing, into a community, to surrender ourselves to Him and Him alone. And then walk forward together. I, um, I think I've been called to preach on today. Ultimate stealth. God is able to, to hide things and hide people. That appears a number of times in the Bible. He's talked about the, the realm that's unseen or realms. How the king in the Old 
Testament were so fearful, so threatened by Elisha the prophet, one man. He sent his whole army to besiege a city. I'm not going to pretend to know what it is. So they besieged the city. Once, when the king of Syria was warring against Israel, he took counsel with his servants, saying, At such and such a place shall be my camp. But the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are going down there. And the king of Israel sent to the place about which the man of God had told him. Thus he used to warn him, so that he saved himself there more than once or twice. So Elisha was giving counsel as the prophet to the king of Israel, because the Syrians were setting up camp in certain places, that if they went down there unawares, he'd be attacked and defeated. And the mind of the king of Syria was greatly troubled because of this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me who of us is for the king of Israel? Thinking he was being uh, spied upon physically. And one of his servants said, none, none, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. And he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and seize him. And it was told him, Behold, he is in Dothan. And he sent their horses and chariots and a great army, and they came by night and surrounded the city. When we see in the Lord of the Rings the, the sieges and the you know the valley is blackened with an army, this is the kind of army that would be needed to surround a city to that sort of extent. I mean, the, these aren't cities like the cities we build of 10 million or 5 million, but several hundred thousand people coming together, a wall around it, and then to surround that, even if it's a square mile, it takes a lot of people, tens of thousands of people, maybe even hundreds of thousands. And that was pretty impressive on the move. When the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, the army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas! My master, what shall we do? He said, do not be afraid, for those that are with us are more than those that are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And when the Syrians came down against him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Please strike these people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness in accordance with the prayer of Elisha. And Elisha said to them, This is not the way, and this is not the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. And he led them to Samaria. As soon as they entered Samaria, Elisha said, O oh Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. So the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold they were in the midst of Samaria. As soon as the king of Israel saw them he said to Elisha, My father shall I strike them down? Shall I strike them down? He said, You shall not strike them. Would you strike down those whom you have taken captive with your sword and with your bow? Set bread and water. they may eat and drink and go to their master. So he prepared for them a great feast, and when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, 
and they went to their master and the Syrians did not come again on raids into the land of Israel. God blinded them and he also opened their eyes and Elisha prayed for his servant and God although he could see the city and the army and the man of God what was revealed was the, the army of God, the chariots of fire, horses and power, immeasurable, innumerable, over, enough to overcome any army of man, any physical army. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And, that, and that's true for all the believers. We, you know, it says the angel, an angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him fear God and delivers them. Do I show off? Do I leap down here at full tilt in this long grass rubble strew ankle twist? Why would I do that? To prove that there's a God in Israel? I can tell you that here and now. call upon him in times of trouble and stress and duress and will he deliver me it's amazing I don't do it for the tricks and the trappings I did it because I was desperate and in need of a father and in need of a deliverer in need of a saviour did it because I was just like you. When I came to that point in my journey where there was nothing else I could get out of it, there's no way I could travel, no answer in any other thing. But I called for him to come into my life and he did. But I didn't immediately give myself over to him in return. A lot of people make a lot of things about being set free by Jesus. But the truth of the Bible is this, that when you're set free, instead of running away from him, go back to him and surrender yourself. Surrender that freedom. His ways are higher and better. He's our God. He is God. I put my trust in him and ask him for direction, for guidance fellowship so God hides the things we don't need to see you get people wrapped up in spiritual warfare going a little bit deeper too deep if you look for demons around every corner you might find them what really we should be doing is is, is, is remembering our place as overcomers as more than conquerors we can go about our days untrammeled and unworried Yes, to be vigilant, but not to be searching every place, every nook and every cranny. Let the Lord do his work. And as we do his work, does that make sense? There's enough here to be doing. And then he blinds a whole army all of those people and gives Elisha a spirit of command so he can command the army and they follow him maybe hand upon the shoulder of the person in front along the road into Samaria into the center of the kingdom of Israel point the king's like what do I do just as I run them through all these people Elisha shows one of those great lessons in the Bible turn it over this wasn't a thing of you it was a thing of God and now every man here sees after they've been blinded exactly what could have happened and why carry that through I kind of hope that people come to God before the end. But with some of them it's going to be like that. The volcano is going to have to erupt. You think you're fine. That's not what I hope for. It's not what I work towards. That's 
if we go down a certain set of expectations and failings. That's what's written. God will reveal himself in the fullness of his wrath, which means the seas turn to blood, the earthquakes and volcanoes and wars and terrible, terrible plagues and sicknesses, all those things just as he did to Egypt until the point where the people could have and the Pharaoh could have absolutely no doubt that the God of Israel, the creator of heaven and earth, was A, real and B, the God who was doing these things. He is, he is God. I've tried you with requests, I've tried you with pleas, I've tried you by being nice. I've given you the life, I've given you the places to live, your money, your wealth, your leadership, families. I've given you all those things, all that he has, all that God has. Acknowledgement, say, Lord, Lord, thank you for the wonderful things that you've done for me. whatever it is, pop music, video games, <sighs> drink, drugs, rock and roll, idols, that's what the Bible says, they're all idols, follow them, and it's getting harder to move out of that in this day and age, there's more people who will agree with you if you go out and about, if you sit in a pub, if you go to the supermarket, if you go stand in line at the bus stop, more people would agree with you that it's not that world, that God doesn't exist, that it it's more about following your own dream and this is what's called the great delusion in the Bible God will send upon the world a great delusion he'll, he'll eventually just close off people's eyes and understand it let the filthy be filthy let the ugly be ugly let the righteous be righteous to share it with you is if you if you shake off the old nature if you, if you ask for your eyes to be unbound unblinded to have the scales fall off as they did with Paul and he was Saul but he was a persecutor of the church and Jesus said why do you persecute me blinded him for three days and Ananias was called to come and see him and he came to him and he was nervous worried this is the chief persecutor of the church came to him anyway brave and something like scales the text says fell away from his eyes like lenses and you have those moments where you can suddenly see afresh and new and it's like that when you come into the kingdom I've had it unpleasant unpleasant Moments of epiphany, moments of transformation, moments of growth. The fly. Dawning of new understanding, a different chapter, a new page. shall belong the land on both sides of the holy district and the property of the city alongside the holy district and the property of the city on the west of the, of the tribal portions and extending from the western to the eastern boundary and of the land it is to be his property in Israel and my princes shall no more oppress my people but they shall let the house of Israel have the land according to their tribes God wanted to set up a, a right 
right-thinking and right-living society. Because of the hard hearts of the people of Israel, they couldn't do it. I remember God was telling that story of the people of Israel so that ultimately it was necessary that they would rebel to the point that they would kill his son. not to. We don't have to be wicked or evil or cruel or hard-hearted or ignorant or stubborn or merciless or cruel or selfish. all about where it's all about the reward for me that's what all the other philosophies and theologies and religions it's all about a reward for me or a nothingness Buddhism all is nothing atheism all is nothing worthless worthless how dare you how dare you Gift is a is a a tale and a trail from the simplistic me-centered worldview to one which says, "Wow, I have a God in heaven, and He can make me appear and disappear." When Christ was in the temple, He upset the people. Not that it, He delighted in upsetting them. His, his rhetoric was challenging, his words were challenging, the order of the day was a, a blind faithfulness, a blind religiosity, following the temple rules and ignoring the sick and the needy and the poor and the hungry in favour of, of, of elevating the self and giving yourself more and more status in the temple until you were, could become a temple Pharisee. Or Sadducee, somebody who walked around in fine robes, who stood in the gates. <laughs> I'm so knowledgeable, I'm so great, I'm so blessed from above. When really it was just the workings of hands. Yes, God appoints leaders. He gives them opportunity. In fact, the, the rich have, have a greater responsibility than the poor because they're not holding on like uh, Anais and Sapphira, holding, holding is the idea of withholding some. How much do I give? How much do I save? How much do I hold on to? What Christ says is to give it all. Do I need to give up my house and my home and my property? Well, maybe one day. If you're called to, do it. Don't resist God. Don't, don't go against him. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He can, he can more than look after you. It was something that was taken through different people time and again. The disciples. Even Job, where everything was taken away, God allowed Satan. To do his, his will in Job's life. on to the truth that, that, that God can provide, that, that, that tears may linger at nightfall but joy comes in the morning, that, 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 that the suffering that we go through now is temporary and that the things that we aim towards are the things of greater value. And in that each time, that's God actually stepped in and gave more. throwing stones. He looked towards heaven and he, and he saw heaven. He saw the city and the place. He saw the beauty. His face shone radiant like an angel as they killed him. He didn't receive a 12 bedroom house and a corporate jet. Calling for the Lord, you have to.
to explore that and I recommend you ask for it. I don't entirely know my purpose or direction. I ask for it. And if it's not revealed to me, I trust to keep doing the things that I'm doing. Like the Maya. Keep building the walls, keep building the stones. Yes, people could come, a fox could, could knock down the walls. That's how they mocked him. But they carried on and they kept going. And God established them and he gave them their homes back and he gave them their city back and he put the gates back on the city and it was built again. And you can do that in your life, take you from low to high. But if you're high, be mindful too of that hand that feeds, that blesses, that reaches out. page on Carpe Cruxus's website. But don't give all of yourself, because you're no good to God if you're just on the floor lying in a heap. Oh, there may be people that come and stone you. Oh, then you will go to the floor lying in a heap. You'll be looking towards Jesus and he'll lift you into his arms. Jesus spoke the truth to the people in the temple, they didn't like it to the point they picked up stones to kill him, to stone him to death. I mean, this wasn't an unusual thing, it happened to Stephen a, a few months later. It wasn't unheard of. Like the lynch mobs in South, uh, Southern America. India, or Armenia, I read about the Turkish, Turks after the First World War crucifying Armenians, Christians, women in lines, like some 1915, like something you'd see or read about from the 12th century or the 10th century, barbaric years ago. It's happened recently, people being crucified, beheaded by ISIS. And we might ask, why doesn't God blind those people, blind the people, the persecutors, let the people escape? I don't know is the answer. It's not their time. It's not the right thing to do. God is calling a people to, to, to come to him, to prepare themselves as the bride. And he's capable of hiding the eyes like he did then. They've picked up the stones. Imagine next time you're in a fairly busy room, but well lit room, and, and, and look at somebody and see if you can lose them. And they hid when he was gone. It wasn't his time. And they were an angry mob, not a group of people trying to keep their eye on one person. said it's the, it's the glory of God to hide and the glory of kings to seek and find. We're uncovering a treasure in scripture, we're uncovering a walk and a way in a, in a relationship with the Lord that should encourage us to keep moving forward. We all stumble and fall, we all have time where you think, no, that's not an excuse. I look back in my own life and the time I lived in London and Gold is green and our landlord had an office just outside the place where we rented and walked down. You'd see him there in the evenings. 
I think he was pouring over scripture more than he was pouring over the accounts. This is a lifeline, a, 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 a guidance, a, a, a history book. It's relevant today. God can speak to you from, from the words of scripture. This isn't like any other book just as it looks like it, just because it was one of the first, just because it's the most published book. This is something more. This is the, the, the communication of, of, of God to his people through inspiration, through experience. Uh, and, and the more you come into it, it's easy to reject at the start because it, 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 it's voluminous. There's a lot of it. And in places it may seem archaic or irrelevant. acceptance is an increase in understanding and in that understanding it, it, it's a coming to the word of fresh and new uh, one uh, more uh, was challenged to do he tried to uh, take down an evangelical pastor the pastor said to him go and read I think the book of Matthew might have been Mark with the eyes of a child open this scripture, you'll have been told or you've, your experience of it may be minimal, you, you may have been told by imams and gurus and, 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 and wise people in your group to say, ah oh, it's just this or it's just that if they're right then you have nothing to lose if they're right you have nothing to fear, but if they're wrong then this guidance and lifeline, you're missing out on the comfort and friend of a friend, of a place to, to retreat to, of something to, 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 to dive into, to be rebuked and corrected by, to be embraced and loved. your steadfast love is good. Deliver me, for I am poor and needy, and my heart is stricken within me. I am gone like a shadow at evening, I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting, and my body has become gaunt with no fat. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they wag their heads, so I've been here. Help me, O Lord my God, save me according to your steadfast love. Let them know that this is your hand. You, O oh Lord, have done it. Let them curse, but you will bless. They arise and are put to shame, but your servant will be glad. May my accusers be clothed with dishonour. May they be wrapped with their own shame as in a cloak. <coughs> with my mouth I will give great thanks to the Lord. I will praise him in the midst of the throng, for he stands at the right hand of the needy one, to save him from those who condemn his soul to death. In every situation, in every place, God is standing with you. And it's up to us to be effective in that, to allow him to be effective through that. To be armoured, so armoured and so ready as to be apparent and to allow him to do the things that he wants to do. To be equipped in knowledge and scripture and wisdom and all the things that he offers discernment as long as we continually give the praise and point the direction back to him. It's not of us, it's not my talent or ability, it's something that's been gifted by God to achieve his purpose in the world. That's the celebration, that's the joy, that's the passion. And that Christ has borne the heavy part of the burden that our walk our burden may be light, but it is a yoke, don't pull against it. It covers and then reveals. It covers and then reveals. And he's
he's revealing himself through you, as he's revealing himself in me in my life. It's a constant thing. It's not you don't reach a point you go, ah, there you go, I made it, I'm preaching. Well, some people do. Well, there you go, you made it, I'm pastor. Well, there you go, I made it, I'm this and that. the world, you're trying to impress the world, you're not trying to impress God, those you for your first name, who are you? I'm Michael, who are you? David, John, Ishmael, Abdul Aziz, Sonu, <coughs> Bismillah, See, way, Chan Lo, Dave and Dale, Highbury, whatever, whatever names have been given to you. <coughs> and as he reveals himself in you. He reveals himself through you into the world, and as you reveal yourself into the world, you become a light upon the hillside. And yeah, you can't go back to your hometown and preach, but you can. But you won't be well received, because they will always see that shroud, that shadow that was once over you. Jesus had fed the 5,000. He said that he wanted to go and walk in the countryside. And the disciples, with nothing else to do, the crowd eventually obviously dispersed. All was there. They, they decided to get in a boat and go over to Capernaum. And of course, in the middle of the night, a storm blows up. And while they're busy at the oars, along comes Jesus walking on the water. In some accounts, Simon Peter, of course, gets out of the boat, walks on the water, begins to sink, and eventually he's lifted up by Jesus and got into the boat. But by all accounts, Jesus gets into the boat. And then when Jesus gets into the boat, they're delivered to the place that they go. They transport immediately to the place where they go. So this isn't just a covering, this is a translation from one place to another. that Joshua fought to establish the kingdom of Israel in Canaan it said that the Lord kept the sun moving stopped the sun moving out in the sky so the battle could be finished and the slaughter could continue God is capable of doing supernatural things it's not just about the sun shining or the rain falling does that supernaturally too. Translation and hiding and revealing people at the right time and moving people is a definition of grace called so often unlooked for. I've always said I'd like to preach a sermon of it and this may be part of it. But it's only small understanding. A purposefulness and excellence of movement. We all know about grace as unmerited favour, or maybe we've not thought about it, thinking of grace as being kind of a peaceful, floaty thing. The grace that, that, that God saves us with is unmerited favour. I don't deserve to be saved, and I've been saved. Glory, hallelujah. So purposefulness and excellence of movement. When God moves, He moves, and anyone who's like it's excellent and purposeful. And if you want that in your life to experience that, then you have to ask Him in. He won't move you in that way until you're going along with Him in the flow, in that river along the lines that the Lord has set out for you. He 
you seize your potential, he offers this to everybody, everybody you meet has the opportunity while they live and breathe to take a decision for Jesus Christ. To acknowledge him, to follow him, to surrender their sinfulness and to be exchanged into a new life and a new beginning. To be baptised in the Holy Spirit water, to be made new, to have a stone heart ripped out and a heart of flesh placed in. That's the good news of the gospel. I only need to preach for a minute each time I come here. Or go anywhere. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in the lives of others. And it's amazing each and every time to see that straight line. A straight path in the desert. The way maker. Stephen saw it as he was dying because he was ready. He would stand in front of the Sanhedrin and he would speak the truth of the Torah, the truth of the Bible to the Israelites, to Moses' children. And they would reject him and they would stone him, but he was ready to go. He was ready to return to the kingdom, to go to the kingdom, to die for it. this life would be to count it as gain, not that you to surrender your life easily, willingly, if need be. Ultimate stealth technology. How do we not see it? I don't know. I don't know. Walking around these walls. A lot of people walking around here today. I thought by now they'd fall. But you have never failed me yet. I recommend reading the book of Nehemiah. It's about 17 chapters. It'll take you about an hour. And it's a bit genealogy in places. Names and names and names. But if you look at uh, the previous... Uh, a sermon a few sermons ago about what's in a name it's important to read them with authority and power and then get received from God the, the things of that story and the benefits for the kingdom it's very relevant for now waiting for change to come knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. I know the night won't last. Your will will come to pass, yes. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness, I'm still in your hands. 
This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. I've seen you move. You've moved the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move. Oh, I've seen you move. You move the mountains and I believe you will do it again. You made a way <coughs> where there was no way I believe I'll see you do it again I've seen you move you've moved the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again you made a way oh hallelujah where there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it again your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed <clears throat> your promise still stands great is your faithfulness faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed me yet you've never failed me yet God who is God is our God and he does things in his time he hides and he reveals he moves and he says wait and be still he's perfect in his ways and I encourage you if you haven't done already to give your life to him to ask to see the taste that he is good that he is real that he is who he says he is it doesn't matter where you are or where you've come from or what your state is right now you're never ready in terms of being ready you're never good enough because you'll never be good enough but seeking and finding is his reward if you want answers if you want more if you want to be nourished, you want to change, you want to be transformed, you want to receive the things of the kingdom, the things that you are taught about or have spoken about in the playgrounds, the things that the teachers and preachers spoke about that your part ignored, that actually spoke to your heart and told you of the things of the satisfaction you could really receive there and it's real and his name is Jesus Yeshua Isa Yesu whatever you want in terms of dialect to speak his name it's who he is Messiah the holy chosen appointed one of Israel God himself manifest in human form living a perfect life and giving that life in sacrifice that our sins may be atoned and that we may be enter in to a relationship that was once cut off and we can enter into that relationship forever there's a contact form on the website if you're in New Zealand I'll baptise you if you're not pray seek fellowship and instruction alpha courses and ask the Holy Spirit ask the Lord into your life and ask him to guide you and be open and aware to the truth and, and
and be aware that there's false doctrines and false teachers that are wolves dressed in sheep's clothing. Your relationship is with God and nothing should interfere with that. Your relationship is with Jesus, but don't make it a thing of your own mind. Beware of your deceit of your lips and the wickedness of your heart. afforded to those that come to him. Come to him. In Jesus' name, may your weak be blessed, may the Holy Spirit be your guide and your comfort, your refuge, your counsel. May you seek the Lord in all things, whether you're outside the kingdom or if you're in it, may you be restored and strengthened, refreshed and renewed, rejuvenated, equipped for all good works before men that even faced with the mockers and the stoners, the persecutors and the haters, rather than choosing to strike back, to answer fire with fire, you choose the other way. You call upon the power of the Lord to be a place of peace and calm and tranquility and rise above it and move yourself possible to a place of safety and refuge, physically or spiritually. If you are in sufferance, if you are in difficulty or travail, my prayers are for you. I declare in the name and power of Jesus through the Holy Spirit a, a, a prayer of provision, a prayer of protection, a prayer of sustenance, a prayer of lifting, a prayer of healing, a prayer of hope and light and transformation. And I pray that by the blood and power and authority of Jesus Christ, by his stripes, I am healed. I am a worthless wretch, a worm before the living King. of righteousness for his name's sake, to be robed, to be prepared, to stand here, to declare his truth. And if people won't come, and people won't listen, and they, all they do is walk round the walls of this room and look down with scornful looks, I will rejoice in him, for he is my saviour and deliverer, my ransomer, my captain, my king. And all they will ever do is look down and scorn. And I pray for them also to have a moment with the Holy Spirit to be released from that delusion, to be released from that thing, to come down from their high places and their high horses and their ivory towers and, and, and become part of the real community, the kingdom of God, not some self-obsessed, self-perceived, telemarketed idea of satisfaction and completion. and enjoy the rest of the Sabbath too. somebody from the place I worked by accident, although I knew he, he lived in the area. It's been a number of months. And I spoke to him. And when I left, I realised that all I'd done was speak out the horrible, difficult, travailing, nasty things that had happened. And the losses that had to happen to me. And I rebuked myself and I said sorry to the Lord. Because I should be joyful. I am. Most 
of the time. I don't have to think about the things that have happened. I may have been hurt and injured. My walk with God has never been stronger. His, his apparent, his appearance in my life. My faith, his understanding, the, the, the density of that love and that beauty has never been better. There's a, a chapter in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 7 or 8, early in the book and it talks about a vineyard that God that, that a vineyard owner, a landowner has built he puts a wall around it, he builds a tower so it's secure and he tends the vines and waters and prunes and grows until he receives of an abundant harvest but the harvest is sour sour that he, he takes his axe and his pick and he smashes the wooden things that carry the vines and he trellises and he smashes the tower and the walls and he takes it all down and he says have I spent all this time growing a crop for it to be bitter how, how I pray for another opportunity oh how I pray for another opportunity say, I have never been better. My life has been blessed and blessed and blessed with a relationship with the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Wisdom and understanding, fellowship and provision, mean as it's been at times, but that close quarters living, that, that living on the edge. Well, how do we want to be? How do you want to be? I would like to say hello. Oh Lord, would that they would just but come. So, uh, yeah. Oh. <coughs> Last song. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. And I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I am never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know. We're all searching for answers, only you provide, because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am And you are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us Yes you are 
You are perfect in all of your ways. Oh, so perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Oh, it's love so undeniable. I, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable I I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love Love, love, you're a good, good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, and you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways, you are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways So perfect in all of your ways You are perfect in all of your ways To us It's who you are Unmerited favour Oh, just an addendum to what it would have been like. That's the crest going down. I'm facing towards uh, central Auckland. Manukau Harbour. Tied out, maybe turning. Safe places of refuge.